the question. Whether it is nobler to be successful or sad while learning and laughing. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be a freaking character or Kirk, something. I have some notes for you. Oh, damn it. Oh, God. I have some notes for you. Do you say, have no- it, say it. Say it with your... Your your diaphragm next time. Oh, my diaphragm. My diaphragm. Okay. You're saying it from your scrotum. <laughs> you want Would it you... to come up a little more. Oh. Do you want me to talk a little bit higher? No. no. I didn't okay. say that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Stick to the script. Oh, shit. The script. That's right. The playwright's in the audience. Hey. Hey. Welcome to the Better Doozy Podcast. Hey, everybody. guys. You know what? You're pr- welcome. You guys are probably thinking, what the hell does that mean? Well, also, what was that scene? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's a famous scene, right? That's Shakespeare, right? That's right. That's Yeah, that's somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk, wherefore art thou, Kirk? Kilton. He's right here. That's you. Okay. That's, that's Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, but the word doozy, you know, it means something that's extraordinary or outstanding of its kind. And if you can't tell, we are not that. But we want to be. Yes, we do. And so this is the podcast where we are going to give you the tools you need to become successful in life. How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I write that? How do I project? That's right. The tools that Michelangelo sculpted from David. Uh, 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 this Michelangelo? Is <laughs> this is not how to sculpt. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm thinking of like Shakespeare times and stuff but like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, it makes sense to me though. It does. Um, obviously yes. it didn't. Yes. <laughs> and guys, the best part is is we are going to learn how to be successful while we are also teaching you how to be successful. Oh, I fucked that part up. That's okay, dude. <laughs> hey, you, you, you'll try- get your lines. You'll get your lines down, I'm sure. I gotta memorize my lines, bro. The playwright will be in Damn. the audience. He's relying on you. Well, I'm Alex Romeo Shakespeare. Stop. And I'm the Bard Billiam Shakespeare cause. Oh. Billiam. You like that? Yeah. 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 Um, Kirk, what are we going to talk about today? Well, if you... I get to memorize my it, life, I, I know, dude. Wow. We need some more rehearsals, yes, we need right? More rehearsals. Maybe we, we should just, have read the play yeah, before. Exactly. <laughs> we just kind of wing it. We just kind of well, wing it. Well, guys, I'm actually really, really excited about this episode because um, it is... Uh, another special episode. It's it's another very special episode because it's something that, like, Stab and I have... have uh, we, our, how, where we grew up. It's where we grew up. It's what I do for a living, different things like that. Or in the world, we're going to learn how... Ooh. To write a play. Oh. Now, this isn't like a, a sports playbook. Oh, yeah. how do I do this or this? Or yeah. how do I like... And action! Uh, you know, or... It's no. not a movie either. No, it's not a movie. It's not a TV no. show. This is it the theater. It could be. This is the theater. The theater. The theater. The theater. We're going to learn how to write a play. Theater. Oh. The first form of, of true expressive art. It's a beautiful fucking thing. True expressive art. Well, let me start by this, asking this was you. Movie, this was before movies. This is what... This, this was, These are the original This was pictures. movies before the movies, TV shows before the TV shows. And, uh, yeah, I agree with that. I didn't have anything to add. No. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Have you ever written a play uh no i have not written a, a play actually yes well, i have well, well, well let I me have, have you written I have, something i have written plays um just nothing nothing big but just like little you know little things that we, we you know i've i've fooled around with and stuff like that yeah um but hopefully consensually yeah uh, yes yes, yeah. yes 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 well the, the play was about consensual <laughs> okay <laughs> the play was about consensual <laughs> yes okay great the play was called consensual yes. <laughs> okay good. um no, but I, I grew up in the theater. Yeah. Uh, I was born on the theater, right? Uh, you were like born on, on stage? On stage. <laughs> I was born on stage. <laughs> wow. Um, and yeah, and uh, I mean, I haven't written a play. No. But I'm... I'm You've written stand-up. I've written stand-up, like that. yeah. Well, what I... You? Have you, you know what? written a play? This is a, such an exciting episode for me because like, I actually... This past year and a half was the first time I ever actually challenged myself 
to work in a way that was like writing. I, I, I challenged myself to write like a monologue and a play or short scenes and stuff. And it, uh, I was very, very uh, fortunate to have a um, accountability system every few weeks throughout the pandemic that helped uh, uh, advocate for people trying to do that. And so it's a very fresh, young, uh, in, in my practice of it, but like I have attempted it and I've got yeah. notes about it and I've, I've gotten people to read certain things. It, but the, the main thing is it takes so much work. It yeah. is, it is rightfully a profession. You gotta create characters. It you is rightfully, a, you, you yeah. are literally the, if you're writing a play, you have to have every single thing pinned down as to why you're writing it, who yeah. you're writing it for, like all these different characters, all this stuff. But th what's so special about it, this episode, is that we have somebody who does that for a living. We do? What? That's right. We have a playwright in the studio Whoa. via Zoom. Whoa. He is one of my dearest friends, and I don't know if he knows this. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Matthew McLachlan. Say hello. Welcome. Hey. hey, boys. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for coming. This is a very – this is an episode – um, that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I've had I've had you in mind because That's it's, true. It, That's it, true. Uh, we I, have had this set up for like we, a long, uh, we've since been like, last like year. Le, but like it's just like you know uh, this past year and all this stuff. It's uh, what one of the things that that has been kind of lacking is like theater, you yeah. know. And it's I think it's important to have somebody who is consistently working on it during this time and fucking killing it. This guy's career. Is a if I had known, if I had known, I uh, would have worn a turtleneck and glasses and a beret. Yes. But I mean, you asked me like last week. You've been planning this for like 14 years, and here I am yeah. wearing my janky baseball tee. I would have uh, really, I would have really shown up here. Yeah. Yeah. My that's, playwriting that's, that's gear. That's were, I really fucked this up. That, that's what we were hoping. You really oh, fucked yeah. this up for me, dude. I, 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 God damn it! I should have, I should have. I, I should have sent you the um. Uh, I didn't the even know you were here. Bard yeah. Shakespeare uh, a costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah sorry my, all my black turtlenecks which is customary when you become a playwright they gift it to you it's like the green jacket at the the golfing tournament it, it's like the green jacket or it's like it's like what, the jacket yeah. you get when you do five snl hosts it's yeah. like it's like you're a part of the this yes. club and why, you wear no, turtlenecks now why why yes. is that why do you wear turtlenecks in the play in in the play when you are the turtlenecks um <laughs> it's to show that no matter what you think, you're not as good as me. You know, it's like that's why <laughs> this is so high up because right. Right. It, it keeps you. Yeah. It keeps you right. on a pedestal. It keeps your yeah. face on a it's, pedestal. It's my it's, chin yeah. up. You have to come yeah. up to me. Yeah, it's because <laughs> the 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 playwrights were getting so much booty. They had hickeys all over their necks. So they had <laughs> that that's i mean that's the practical reason that's why it's not see-through anymore it was yeah. a see-through yeah. one but now it's because what well, you don't you think it's soft but it's actually hot it keeps your neck up it's like the old victorian oh, so you, kind of things yeah because yeah. we're not going to look at you we're not going to look at the actors we're going to be like great work it sounded wonderful I'm looking at this <laughs> exactly. all the time. well matt tell us a little bit about your uh, in a nutshell or or so like your history of getting into playwriting when you started maybe just like why it's something that you're so passionate about and uh yeah yeah uh well i i started as silly as it sounds i think starting out as a kid watching all of the sketch comedies from snl to kids in the hall was a huge influence and especially because they would do monologues and a lot of their stuff felt just like small little funny one acts and things and so when I started acting as a kid all of my audition monologues were from kids in the hall and I just always thought that was really silly and funny and it was um kids in the hall that's um that, the, the, the whitest kids you know <laughs> You remember, a lot of you kids remember involved, that? but not the same kids. You remember no, that that sketch comedy group? I did. Kids, they were know? the whitest kids. Is incredible. I actually like that. They were but, funny. So, so the kids in the hall was a what a Canadian. It was a Canadian show that Lauren Michaels produced. 
No way. Yeah. And so they, they had a live audience for so a lot of their stuff. And then they filmed a lot of things too. So they, and a couple, I think a member or two, you, you probably recognize all their faces, but one of them then went to SNL. But anyway, they, I was watching that since I, before I knew what they were saying was actually funny. And I started acting when I was a kid, doing all of those, those uh, monologues and started writing my own little stupid funny things and never thought it was good. So I just kept acting and then until I moved up to New York and started at the Maggie Flanagan studio, which is like the, where Kirk and I also, we both went. It's basically like a boot camp for actors and to take whatever you do seriously and tear yourself apart. And it was really great. But by the end, I realized, I'm like, I think I just want to take all the ideas I've written down my whole life and pursue those instead of getting yelled at by directors uh, for not doing a thing. I want to be the person yelling. So, um, yeah, so I, I just started, I, so I started writing some stuff and luckily was told it was halfway decent and to keep going and um, started finding that from my background of uh, sketch comedy and trying to be funny as well as um, loving all, all thing comic books and just things, not, not your typical uh, background for, for playwrights. And I just loved theater anyway and just thought, well, this could be on stage and just started writing things that um, I don't see. Because as an actor, I was, I was acting and so I was finding scenes for, for classes and I'm like, I don't like any of these things. I don't, none of these are what I want to do. And so I'm like, can I write a monologue for class? Can I do something? So uh, I kind of just fell into it. That's something that I've always enjoyed about your work to, to say uh, quickly is like, to, to know that you come from a, a, a unique background and that, you know, you're, you're, you're basically a, a, like a nerdy, nerdy guy. You like the, the comic books. You like the this, the that. You like sketch comedy, all this different stuff. And you also like the, like, art of playwriting. And I think that in all the stuff that you've written, I've, I've been able to see how, how it's just, there's just a different, different lens that is uh, uh, in in the writing and the the um, kind of presentation of it that I've always enjoyed. Enjoyed. So so you started as early as what age? Uh, man, well, I've always started writing down ideas from I'd say like sixteen or seventeen. Cool. Uh, but even when I what got as silly as it sounds, getting an iPhone where it was like I have an, a, a notes app. I have a notepad in my pocket at all times. A notes app is literally like mine is filled with notes and like for jokes, jokes right? Like a that, notes yeah. app is is a beautiful Love place notes. for for creative people and artists, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would say seriously around twenty one, twenty two, when it was, oh well, that would be funny for a play or a movie or a sketch or anything. And then I started writing it down, going one day. A playwright, a weary playwright will need an idea and he'll come to me and I'll be like, don't you worry. I got it for you. <laughs> well, we, we, we have a lot of ideas. Is there a way we could give you like a premise to something that we want for, for do, real then, though we have you like actually like write write it we're talking we, we want have to do, sketch like, yeah. ideas yeah, we, we have got, short film yeah, we ideas got, we got short film sketch ideas so if we give them to you and you like the idea could you maybe marinate on it and like write something and then give it back to us? Oh, for you a want break? me to stew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you give me the ingredients and so us, Papa will see what he can cook up for you. Hey, oh my hey, gosh. Hey, we're, we we're, we're, we're buying turtlenecks we're tonight. Bu- <laughs> <laughs> you can get them in bulk. Amazon I'll tell you Prime right shipping now. right now. <laughs> yeah, you can get, you well, can hey. Get in bulk. Yeah, yeah, buy them in bulk. We're yeah. wearing them twenty four seven. Well, guys, I I hope you're excited because we're we're gonna learn how to write a play. We, we Matt, got the top five tips here. Matt has provided us with the top five tips on how to write a play. This is super exciting, and it's just uh, we're gonna we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn about the first real form yeah. of of whether you um, like uh, it or not. Expression. You're That's right. Yeah. Let's do it. So we're gonna jump in the top. Five tip is read more plays than you probably want to. Mm. There are award-winning and world-changing plays out there Mm -hmm. for you to read. So reading them helps you see how they were done, which you can learn from. Oh, amen. Dude. Yeah, read. 
And if read. you can't read, listen to the audio book. And if you're deaf, <laughs> the, the audio then, play. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, go. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. I guess don't go see the play or experience it all. Just listen to the audio book. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turtlenecks up. <laughs> Turtlenecks <laughs> up. Uh, ear, ears off. Eyes ears down. off. Yeah. <laughs> ears off. Hashtag turtlenecks up. Turtlenecks. Uh, hashtag turtlenecks <laughs> hashtag up. Turtlenecks up, up, baby. <laughs> hashtag I'm better than you. You know, right. this is this is something. You know, I feel like a part of this uh, uh, having you on is going to be something that is a little bit of a reminder as well for me, just being an actor, because something that's really hard about being in the like the theater and showbiz is consistently. Um, consuming and like surrounding yourself or watching certain things or reading certain things that are out right now so you know the stories that are being told yeah. but also knowing the history where did they come from it's a lot there's 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 so much that you can you can like uh, consume and read and learn from yeah it's like when you uh, like because I used to watch a film and then I could I would like google like the um, the script of it Mm -hmm. And you could see like, you know, what they improvised, what they, you know, what they took out. But you could see like the original scripts. I, love and that. I don't know. I just like to follow along like that sometimes because I, I like to. Yeah. You know, I, I try to write scripts and stuff, too. But. Yeah. You know, it, it, one, one thing that's so interesting about plays is that some people say they're like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to read a play. I don't know how. And it's like, wait, what? Like, yeah, uh, that's something that for me is like, wait, what do you mean? It's just. It, they're, they're people speaking yeah. like it's almost as if a book it's like what like we don't, just, we don't talk to those people Kirk we're no, turtlenecks no, no, up no. Well, we're turtlenecks we're up we're turtlenecks up <laughs> turtlenecks <laughs> up they're, they're beneath us we don't even look at them that's why we're <laughs> looking up at the well, ceiling well Matt right. let me let me ask you like this this is this is the first tip but it's definitely got some importance to it how often do you find yourself reading plays that are like older classic plays or newer ones that are being released or whatever. Well, it's hard. A lot of times I'll be writing something and I don't want to muddy the water and be like, I'm writing a family drama and now I'm reading an absurdist comedy. And then I'm like, Oh, well that's in my brain now. And now my family drawn, now they just turned into rhinos and now they're, they're walking backwards. I'm like, Maybe that's what it needs, but I try to read, try to always be reading at least something. Um, but sometimes I just hyper focus on what I'm, what I'm writing. But I would say, like, if you, I mean, how the heck are you gonna know how to write a good play or how to if write anything ever, if you don't um, if, see if it? You're, say you're like, you know what? I'm in the mood to write like a comedy. Yeah. Will you like? look up uh some of like your favorite like you know comedy plays to get inspiration for like what you want to write oh man i'll ingest everything that i have of of uh I, I wrote a play that what whatever's closest to what i'm trying to write i wrote um <laughs> a play with a vigilante character who yeah. like a batman type character who kidnapped the world's three richest billionaires uh and it's surprisingly funny but it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So then I found all of the, even the comics to the plays, to all the things that kind of get in that world and just kind of read that in one go. So that way it's there in the back of your mind. I mean, it's the same with um, acting and stuff. You know, you just, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever you're doing with characters, you just kind of consume do all, do all the work and then forget about it. Yeah, so for sure. Because yeah. like... Cause, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what you, you speaking about that reminds me about kind of my process as an actor, like w w d depending on the specific um, uh, topic or things that my character or the play might be dealing with, I will consume and, and read or watch as much that has to do with that. So it's just like always doing something to my brain and, and kind of like uh, enhancing what I have to do for, for, the, for the role. I'm sure. Uh, do you find that to be similar with uh, like content or certain things that you watch or read when you're yeah, I mean, writing something? Almost everything that I, I will get into whatever, whatever I'm trying to write, I'll try to consume as much as I can. That's as close to that. Because a lot of what mainly what the first step is saying is uh, steal. 
you know, steal what you, you can because yeah. these people are winning awards and changing the world and doing great things. So they're obviously probably writing it in a great way. So just do that or see how it's done. I mean, chances are when you're starting out, your writing is garbage and it's formatted like a computer that's forced to write a play but had milk spilled on it or something. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're not, I could not agree more. You're not in the turtleneck club. You're not in the turtleneck. Not, you're not yet. even in the aisle. Probably not even you're, in the building. You're wearing a you're wearing a you're wearing a V neck. You're not even wearing a crew neck. You're wearing the neck, a V neck. The neck isn't even That's, connected. You're, you're you're the normal neck and you're less neck. You're <laughs> you're less you're, neck. You're less neck. Like down, you're not like down even down a to the normal navel. t-shirt. What what was that? Down to the navel neck. You you got yeah. down to the navel neck. A deep you're v. You're a deep V, yeah. <laughs> A V that has no business being that deep, for sure. <laughs> no business being that deep. Right, well, well, this that, was interesting. Yeah, that's Guys. awesome. Yeah, read more. Read more. It, it, will, it will help you if you if you want to write. Reading it, well, you can see the formats and stuff. Exactly. And, like the whole big sweep of this tip, I yeah. feel like is is read as much if you want to get into it. Read as much so you know yeah. how many how many people kind of like the entryways uh, and certain topics that people or way that people write. And then depending on what you're writing, read more of something that's or uh, something that's similar. You know, that's, that's great. That's yeah. great. Well, moving on, we're on to the uh, fourth number day. four, everybody. Um, see more plays than you probably should. Oh boy. Uh, the script is the blueprint and watching the piece be performed is the whole house put together. Okay. It's yeah. a beautiful analogy. I used to, um, uh, when I did theater, uh, they, the, the directors used to actually take us on New York trips to see shows in Broadway and like meet the, uh, like the cast afterwards and stuff. And I saw like Chorus Line, Company, Bro. Grey Gardens, uh, all, yeah. all that stuff. Bro, all yeah. like All like the actual, like, like Broadway shows. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that were like really good. And, uh, uh, you know, I I enjoyed them all. I enjoyed yeah. them all for well, what they were. You know, well, well, Matt, you'll... it's like it's like uh, <laughs> you ever see that South Park episode where every time you take your wife to the uh, Broadway, they, uh, you get a you get a blowjob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "What? Well, okay." They're like, "Bro, just take her to the Broadway, dude. Play. Just it's take like, her to Lion yeah, King. Yeah, they <laughs> go see Oz or, or what is it, Wicked? Right? Well, just take her to Wicked. Yeah. She'll, and she'll... they're like, and they're like, no, no, listen, listen to like the song." And he's like, take me away to that special place, that blowjob place. <laughs> that blowjob place. <laughs> Can you take your blowjobs? Yeah. They like, they like subliminally like say blowjobs. For, for the guys to get blowjobs. Yeah. And then the girls after the shows like are just blowing the guys on the yeah. way home. And they're like, what? Oh, my God. Uh, so do you ever write in like blowjobs? Blowjobs, yeah. I was just going to say, like, come to my new, my new play, which is called like uh, – you know, the family blow job that matters, you know, it's a yeah. blow job, it's a blow job, family, family matters, job that matters. Fam family yeah, matters. Family it's a matters. family matters musical. Yeah. In the context of how to get a blow job. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dude. Uh, yeah. So I turtlenecks and blow jobs. Turtlenecks up and blow jumps down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> blow jumping down. Neck up, blow down. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Yeah, go watch all the shows. Yo, yo, yeah. So, 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 Matt, this reminded me of what, what, probably a similar time that you you had when I was during my my uh, studying at the Maggie Flanagan studio. My mentor like put in my my head. It was like it was it, you know it is important. You need to know the stories that are being told right now. If you're an actor, or an artist, especially if you're a playwright, you need to be going to Broadway. And, and off-Broadway even, and seeing all the shows, I think during the course of two years, I saw probably close to 30, 30 40 plays on Broadway. I spent so much money because it was important to me <laughs> to, to, like, um, you know, see that. Because it was going to help. It was only going to help me. And it, it also goes back to, like, the, the first thing, to be able to, like, watch performers or, right. like, watch plays the way that they are written to be able to still be like, Oh, that reminded me or helped me will help me with this or that. Yeah. yeah it's and so also important. When you write a play and then you need to be able to like, see how it might 
like be like perform like portrayed and like performed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't be like, and then he skydives off of the building and then fights the dragon. And uh, you know what I mean? Um, sir, we don't have the budget for yeah, that. Yeah, we're not in the budget there. <laughs> you could do it, but hey, you know. Exit chased by a bear. Yeah, it's it's very much. Um, yeah, you gotta be realistic with what you're writing. Forest through the trees, because if you're writing the same thing, which you know you'll be going back and looking at all the same things, but then you see something in real time and see how it happens from oh this little bit and then this little bit and then probably something really fucking cool on stage or like it just it just excites you and it makes you kind of see the the magic. It's like um, I always think of it as cooking and food because I am hungry all the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you can try to piece together how to make the best meal. But, you know, you go and have a really great meal all the time. You're like, oh, that's what I should be doing. Or that's how it should be. Or that's how it's like, that's so good. Maybe I see what they're doing there. Maybe I can try that and not use so much goddamn salt all the time. Or not use Ooh, this. Yeah. That's so a it's, great it's cool analogy. To see what other people are doing and how they're having a, a fully create because they already spent. It's, it is kind of like the, the first step because you're just watching the years of work put together into the final piece. And now you're like, okay, I see what you're doing. Now. I'm just going to steal this. Or I, I had a cool instance of seeing, um, I think it was it, was it uh, Fool for Love with oh, Sam yeah. Rockwell? Sam and, Rockwell and uh, uh, I what's her, her name? name? But um, Nina it, was very good. it was very good. And uh, at the time, uh, Sam Shepard was still alive and he was in the audience and seeing yeah. him like taking notes and stuff and um, seeing what he was, was at my on. performance so, too, dude. Yeah. 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 So it was cool just to see that and even just be like, Oh, that's, you know, that was a really cool decision or, or whatever, or even just being there gave, gave me seeing it and seeing him there. And he's, you know, that plays 30, 40 years old at the time, but he's still rewriting it and stuff. So anyway, it was, cool. To, you know, to I, it's so cool what you said about the analogy of it uh, being cooking, because in a, in a technical analogy, they preheated the oven, they put it in, they did the spices, all this different stuff, and they got it, they've had it cooking for a while, and now where they're going to serve you the dish, and then some, t so it's years, years of doing that, and then sometimes it happened, and then they're like, you know what? I want to rebake that. Let's remake that. I think the the society right now would love that, you yeah. know? Aunt Lois, the old society doesn't like it no more. We're going to rewrite it a bit. <laughs> Where's my pizza? It's been years. It's been years since my pizza was here. Call yeah. the shop. Yeah. <laughs> this pizza, so you, yeah. The, uh, well, stick to playwriting. You guys are shitty chefs. <laughs> <laughs> hey um well go watch the fucking show okay <laughs> go watch the fucking show go watch the fucking show get a blow job all right <laughs> playwrights <laughs> hey we got an ad break now you know what time it is we got an ad break we'll be right back we'll be right back with a word from our Sponsors. Uh no, uh, I think we call this intermission. In oh, <laughs> oh yes. Oh sorry. We do uh, this intermission. This is my turtleneck. <laughs> we call this inter intermission. Intermission. Yeah, turtlenecks up. Turtlenecks up. All I right. should have worn a turtleneck. Yeah, that would have been good. That would have been that great. Been good. Okay, right. we'll be right back after this intermission. <laughs> Uh, hey, Kirk, you know what sucks? When you can't find your turtleneck and you've been waiting for a damn pizza for years. Gosh, I couldn't agree more, Stop. You know what doesn't suck? Botticelli Foods! Oh! Makes sense to me? Yeah, you know what? I'm tired yeah. of cooking a dish for a bunch of people and then realizing that I shouldn't be cooking the dish. I'm not cooking the dish. I'm writing a play. I got to start writing this play for these people. Yeah. I'm also tired of buying expensive, low-quality foods because I deserve nice and quality things. Yeah, you do, you know? And Botticelli is that. Right. Mm. It's a family owned and operated business with four generations in the food industry. Four. They know food. OK, that's more than three generations. Uh, bring, they Man. bring an experience to your table with a taste that transports you to the heart of Italia. Italia. Yes, Italia. guys, go to uh, 
BotticelliFoods.com right now and use promo code DOOZY at checkout for 10% off all Botticelli Foods products. That is D-O-O-Z-Y. We're talking sauce. Oh. We're talking pasta. Yes. We're talking olive oil. Oh, my God. We're talking balsamics. Okay. We're talking turtlenecks. We're talking talking (laughs) blowjobs. We're talking... (laughs) Wait, maybe not. And many other <laughs> flavorful products. <laughs> yeah! As you can tell, Botticelli Foods are extraordinary and outstanding. Just like the men of Doozy. Uh, but that's not the only ad we have for you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's not the only ad we have for you. <clears throat> this week's episode is also sponsored by Burn, the innovative fitness company behind the world-renowned Burn Board. Yes, recently wink, ra- wanked. <laughs> recently wanked. <laughs> guys, Blow I am- and many other flavorful products. <laughs> guys, recently ranked by uh, lady boys who play Juliet <laughs> in um, a Romeo and Juliet. Um, also, Women's Health Magazine as the best low impact cardio workout of 2021. Burn six foot adjustable slide board. It's a low tech, low cost. Uh, at home fitness solution for people who want to break a sweat without breaking the bank. Ah, uh, you know, Kirk and I have both been there, right? Yes, we've gotten blowjobs <laughs> <laughs> at the theater, but we also went to the New York studio hundreds of times pre COVID and we're active users of uh, at their at home platform. Yes, that's right, and with. Over eight categories and hundreds of on-demand workouts to choose from. It's actually really fun. The burn board and subscription makes it so easy to get that workout done and take your lady to the theater right after. Ooh. Okay, our listeners, that's you, okay? Our listeners will receive a special seven-day free trial. Damn, that's seven free days. That's that's a week. To their monthly subscription, plus 50% off the purchase and free shipping. You're getting seven days, right? You're getting seven free days. You're getting 15% off, okay? You're getting Ayo. free shipping with the code DOOZY15. That's D double O Z Y one five at checkout. C H E C K O U T. Yes. Check out. <laughs> you didn't know what I was spelling. <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you saying, guys? Yeah. Visit um, uh, theburn.com today for more information about how you can get on board today. Ooh. Again, that's B triple R N dot com to get 15% off plus free shipping with the code doozy15 at checkout. I love it. Now, back to the, back to the theater. Back to the theater. <laughs> Hey, All right, wow. we are back. Listen, wow. I took a little tinkle. The line was so long. Yeah, I got a blowjob. I hit what? <laughs> hey, <laughs> me too. It must have been the turtleneck. <laughs> it must have. <laughs> you know what? I I I commend the playwright. He must he must have written quite a show. Free a lot of blowjob. All right, you know what? That's enough blowjob talk. Okay. Yeah. Listen, we are professional actors. We are professional actors with with networking connections yes. to playwrights. Yes. Oh, we, oh, let me ask you. Have you ever written a sex scene before for the play? How do you how do you manage that? Yeah. Have how you, do you how do you write a sex scene for the theater? Have you ever written a, a sex sexy scene? Oh, I, listen, I would I would argue all my scenes are sexy. I can't <laughs> I can't yeah. say that I've written a sex a scene that is sex. Don't really know how to go 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 do the other way, you know. I, I just kind of make the scene sexy. Um, yeah. I could, yeah. I could throw in some like penis and vag stuff if you want. I can just kind of write that in there, but uh, I haven't done that. I actually feel like that's a big thing that's happening a lot on stage. And when I'm in the audience, I've never gone that was needed. So part of me <laughs> is like, oh, I needed to see his. I'm jack, so right? glad oh. I saw that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Or else, I'm but sure I will. It, uh, unless you're there with your wife and she needed to see that penis to, to remind her that. Yeah. How small Listen. yours is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, guys, we're going to jump back into these tips. We're in the top three tips now for how to write a play. Tip number three, Kirk, enter stage right. Avoid writing good ideas and write things you need. Do right. That's good. 
keep going. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Have a solid reason why your writing a piece will give you a foundation and depth, deep, deep depth to the peace. Uh -huh. Peace. Uh -huh. Peace. Deep, deep yep. depth to the peace. Even don't if break, it's a character. Don't comedy. Break, don't break character. Plus, yep. the audience will know if there isn't a out. reason why. Take like that random dick that showed up that and popped out. And scene. Scene. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know what? This is actually something that... Uh, yeah, don't be like, oh, uh, don't have... A look, random thing happen. There are... When you watch a, a, a play, right? And random shit is going on, right? And characters are being built and scenes are happening... The audience, you got to know what the audience needs and wants, right? Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to add a fucking goose in, in Act 3 and never and never go back and talk about the goose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are going to be yeah. like, I needed more explanation on the goose. I, I needed, you can't leave them wanting. You want them to You're be. You're going to have the audience yeah. rioting yeah. in the in the stand saying, we need to hear more about the goose. Act Give us the goose. Act 1 was about a goose. Act 2 was about. Uh, turtlenecks like why well, don't do, what what was this play called blowjobs Blo it was a bad blowjob <laughs> me you both watched the fairy man on broadway no i don't think because i, I kid you the fucking not they bring in a real goose and they never talk about it after no for, wait, wait, where was the fairy man me? where was the fairy man <laughs> done i can't remember me they bring in a real, the guy walks in and the whole audience goes, what the, f and the guy just is holding a real live goose. <laughs> Wait, where was I the fairy man made, done? I just literally just made that <laughs> That out. is so hilarious. Yeah, no. Where you, was the you fairy man what, done? What, what, we're dis what we're discovering here, Stob, is that you're a brilliant playwright and you didn't know that. And it's all buried oh. beneath, it's all buried beneath the turtleneck and the blowjob jokes underneath there. You got a goose. You yeah. got a goose. <laughs> I'm, well, dude, I'm too you know good what? The, for you guys, you now. know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of like like what we were, the, yeah, goose and what we were talking about earlier. Oh, bear enters into the stage and runs off. It right. reminds me of like Evil Von Hova's, um, uh, 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 the Crucible a few years back in like 2017. It started with a real life wolf running out. What to? Center stage. stage. Did, Did you, you see that production? No. Dude, it had Saoirse Ronan and um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sierra and Hines in it. Oh, and and the uh, the guy who plays Q in yes, the yes, um, yes, he's great. Okay, yeah, get but it was wolf. like get back to Wolf. But it was like, what is that Wolf doing? Holy shit! I'm <laughs> paying attention, and then it didn't show up until the end, and it was like, I don't, I don't understand. Why, why, why would, why the Wolf? It definitely is not written in the play. Well, they. I'm glad they didn't show next to each other because there would have been like goof, goof, uh, goof, goof, a wolf hey. goose relations or or, or uh, anger and fighting. Yeah. Hey, hey, what was that uh, that play with Harry Potter when he was naked with the horse? Equus, which is so funny because last you week's saw his, episode, you saw his dongle, right? Last week's you saw episode, his, his wand. His last week, you, you saw his wand. You saw, you saw, yeah, you saw his, uh, his, uh, that what shall not be named. And did, and did, did he? He who shall not be did named. Did he jerk off the horse or? No, he sorry, fucking mom. rid the horse. <laughs> he rid the horse with his peen on its back, and then he stabbed its eyes out. It's a hilarious. It's not. <laughs> it's a hilarious play. He stabs the horse's eyes out. Yeah, Who yeah. wrote that? They're sitting in their they're sitting in their home. They're like Harry Potter naked on the back of a <laughs> I horse. Don't know if the person initially thought Harry Potter, but when they realized that casting, when they watched Harry Potter, they're like, I want to see that guy's cock on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> He who should not be named. Yeah. My kink is specific, and I need it to happen. <laughs> my my, my, my kink you, is specific, yeah. and the only way I can get it is through live theater. I need to write this yeah. play. Can you, can you, um, uh, fuck, I had it. What was it? Oh, so what, what was that? Um, no, can you imagine the auditions for that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you're too much like the horse. Yeah, 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 right. The horse had to audition too. What the? What is that play about? 
He just uh, oh, dude, it's very interesting. It's very good. I've he never goes seen into it. A barn but and takes his clothes off and rides a horse naked and stabs its eyes out. If, Sounds hilarious. Listen, if that's what you wanted to be about, <laughs> you freak. <laughs> Free to give loads out. But but to move on before we move on, I just want to oh, say we're in the top two. I, I, I just want to say before we move on to top two, this is a, actually a really great tip. Like avoid writing good ideas or uh, even something that like I've talked to you about with certain yeah. things about what I've written because yeah. Matt has been really really great with uh, with like helping me out with certain things that I've been trying to work on but like d- like don't just try to justify something for justifying sake like right. there is a reason why this is in it and if there isn't a reason like you do not necessarily need it you also, know it's also uh, the foundation of what the the piece is going to be right it's uh, yeah, you can have your wolf and your goose and your turtlenecks and your blowjobs, but yeah. it's got to yeah. have a solid reason. But like, sometimes you're just gonna want to write that monologue that's silly and about farts and stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, creating kick-ass theater, like, go from the gut because the the audience will know if it's not. Like, I had this play that Kirk was uh, really great to help me workshop it and stuff, and it was um a v- very funny silly premise of a, a dexter like serial killer who just wants a friend and so this woman stumbles in on his murder cabin and he can't kill her because she's not bad but he can't let her go so it's silly and funny and blah 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 um and i didn't know how to end it and it was just kind of like this hollow funny absurd kind of thing but then uh finding my reason why like why am i actually writing it and i realized that these two characters are very similar to uh, parts of me and then I needed like this guy who does this, this crazy weird thing that he doesn't think people understand uh, away from everyone else and then this person has these personal issues that uh, lets it, that get in the way of living a good life and so I needed those two parts of me to come together and be okay so then it was like okay so now I have my reason why I need yeah. these two parts of me to be great so uh, are you a again, murderer you, what'd you say <laughs> Are you a low-key murderer? Yeah, yeah, I kill, dude. Um, but even <laughs> uh, I kill on side. <laughs> but even a, a certain uh, one act that we have all talked about um, and may talk about in the future of, about a silly a silly comedy about uh, Vikings and uh, all these silly things yes. that happen. So it was a great idea that I had. But then I'm like, well, the reason why I want to write it is to show that these the most toxic. In masculinity doesn't you know of vikings the guys don't have to be that no matter what there's yeah. no justification for being it so it's yeah. as much of a silly idea as it is to have vikings uh being taught not to be vikings uh there's a solid reason why because it's like well don't be misogynistic assholes which i have a sneaking suspicion we'll talk about that later gosh yeah we'll talk about that later guy that that is a beautiful beautiful end of this 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 third tip to to really really mine your feelings you know it's hard it's a lot it takes a lot of you to write a play and you got to just understand why you're doing it and it is okay to kind of take the time to be able to sit and think oh why am i doing this or like even for a, a comedian you know why am I really like like telling I this like joke? Low job joke, <laughs> or, or like <laughs> or like why does this part like really like speak to me? But anyways, guys, we're moving on uh, to the top two tip. Number two. So oh, I want you I, to read this. I want you to read this in your best uh, your best monologue voice, the, the most theatrical voice you can you can give, please. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Number two. (laughs) Don't be an asshole. (laughs) It doesn't really matter what you're writing. Julia Roberts. (laughs) Julia Rob. Hurts. (laughs) Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> if people don't want to work with you, it doesn't matter what you're writing. If people don't want to work with you, it doesn't matter what you're writing. If people don't want to work with you, say the first line. Say the first. It line. doesn't matter, matter what you're writing. If people don't want to work with you, <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> what you're writing. If people 
don't want to work with you. It doesn't matter what you're writing if people don't want to work with you. Why? Man, it doesn't matter. Okay, all right. <laughs> and, and cut. Thank you. What you're writing if people don't want to work with you, man. So that, don't be That's honest. so true, though. How was that? Uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Enter <laughs> Goose. Enter, <laughs> Enter Goose and Wolf. Enter Goose, Goose, Goose Wolf. Harry <laughs> Potter, naked on a horse. <laughs> uh, don't be an asshole. Yeah, this is like, yeah. this is like uh, in comedy, too, in the theater. Yeah. If you, if you act like, you know... If, if you act like you got that turtleneck energy, no one's yeah. going to want to work with you. Listen, you'll know when you have the turtleneck he's energy. He's a great actor, but he's a piece of shit. Because you will not just randomly be a fucking dick. You'll be a real human being and just know that you got the turtleneck energy. Yeah. Yeah, you also won't want to... If, if there's so many people out there who could fit the, fit, take the role. And, uh, you know, if, if you're difficult to work with... They people will not hire you again. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think I think yeah. Just like across the board, don't be an asshole. You know, like if you're writing a play, don't just. I mean, there are people listening to this. There are people reading this who are trying to bring it to life. Yeah. Don't just randomly write some really really disgusting shit. You know. Because you're having, you're having, uh, you're in, uh, because I'm, I'm, you know, writing a play or writing a scene or monologue, it involves w uh, collaboration, with it, which is something that we haven't really necessarily talked to, talked about yet and how it is important and, and actually probably be professional. Yeah. You got to be professional because it, it, it is, it is, uh, I know it, it's a tricky it's a, it's a rocky road, I feel like, to be able to hand your baby off, and by baby I mean your new play about geese and wolves, to random people. And by geese and wolves, he means blowjobs. <laughs> blowjobs, geese and wolves. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. A geese giving a. <laughs> a geese giving a. a geese, giving geese, a geese, geese giving a blowjob. A wolf a blowjob. Oh my god. That's and that's only in the and they never talk about it again. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> opens. It opens on it that. It opens up like that farm animals and then it just cut and then it just that's it. They never talk about it. <laughs> then it's then it's set in a financial firm in uh What's New York the City. difference? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I yeah, can't it's wait. Symbolic. You know. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I can't wait. I can't wait for um, your girlfriend, Katie, to um, listen to this episode and be like, y you couldn't just stop for one day without blowjobs or dick jokes. Yeah. Don't, worry <laughs> don't worry about it. She won't listen. Oh, OK, good. Nice. <laughs> gotcha. OK, yeah. Don't hey, be a freaking asshole. Don't be an asshole. You guys, we're in the number one. Look, we've we we're at the finale of the play. Yeah, that's right. Where, have you have you have you? Are you sick of me saying blowjobs? <laughs> are you yeah. sick of us talking about geese and wolves? Who would have thought that that word would have came out during the How to Write a Play episode? Yeah, right. You know, well, it's because of the South Park. I blame South. Of Park. course, of course. But <sighs> this is a very interesting. Uh, weirdly, it seems probably connected. Okay. The no, number one tip wait, is... Wait, 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 wait. Kirk, we what? want you to say this in your most dramatic uh, monologue. This, this is your... This, okay. This is your moment. This is your... This, this will book okay. you... The, this will get you the audition. Okay. This is a direct address uh, address yes. to the um a direct yes. address. To am the, I, am, I, am I shipping? Living in my apartment. Okay, so this is to the goose... Um, yes. you guys are the goose. Who no, are this this is to all those 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 huge playwrights out there. Okay. All right. Tip number one. Kirk enters stage right. <laughs> <laughs> He's filled with joy, so keep going. Use it. Use it. Use okay. it. You're filled with joy. I'm an audience member. I'm an audience member. <laughs> Do whatever the hell you want. Ooh. Mm. Don't think you have to look, uh. be, or write in any sort of way. Yeah. Your experience and who you are is what makes your voice unique. So do whatever the hell you want, okay? Whoa. 
Don't don't think you have to look, be, or write in any sort of way, Julia. Whoa. Your experience and who you are is what makes your voice unique. You're special. You're beautiful. Oh my God, he's crying. Is that a real? Did you really just start crying? <laughs> Can I have a blowjob? <laughs> Etsy, yay! Okay, hey, so well, those are the top five tips, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What did we? I even just read. I blacked out. Do whatever the hell you want. Do whatever the hell you want. Do whatever the hell you want. Blacked out. Dude. That was good. Uh, uh, I, yeah, those, you know, those yeah. are the top five tips. It is. Uh, so I, I'm, t I'm told that you have a surprise extra five tips for us. I certainly do. I certainly do. I, I, I did just want to say to clarify number one of like, just let everything. Like I, I had no business in my mind being a playwright where I'm like I've read more comic books than I'll ever read plays. And I've read a lot of plays. <laughs> I, like my favorite band is Slipknot and I make a dick joke about fucking everything. Like just do it, write whatever, and it's gonna be great. But I have some bonus tips for you both. Oh my gosh, what, now, 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 uh, Matt, would you like to read these for us or would you like to send I'm, it through I'm the gonna chat? I'm gonna read these to you and I, I would love that. Your, because these are not necessary, but they will help a lot. So I, I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to read you the description of what I have. Amazing. I, 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 am, I am so excited. So, guys, these are th uh, an extra five bonus tips yeah. from playwright Matthew McLachlan himself. Yeah. Let's hear it. Okay. Wow. Uh, so number five yeah. is um, have an incredibly terrible home life. Like, just... <laughs> Just like the more fucked up, the better. Like no one wants to see plays by someone who enjoyed hugging their parents or your first love was the, f the love of your life. Like next, like theater's not for you. Go be happy somewhere else and let us broken ass weirdos do the theater stuff. Yeah, dude. You Oh, you ended up with your high school sweetheart. Great. Oh, you're a playwright? Don't want to watch that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> No wow. boy, no. Not gonna work here. Go do, go, go do something. Go do a podcast. Go, 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 go. Have some failure. Sprinkle some failure in your life. Beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. I like that tip. Number so, four so that's five. bonus. Number four. Have at least three Ivy League degrees, because <laughs> nothing says you create art good than incredibly expensive private intellectual institutions that put you in more debt than any playwriting salary will ever get you out of. I love like oh it. Oh my he's gosh. A, he's, a good, he's a good playwright. Yeah. He's dude, a good writer. Dude, yeah, dude, good. Dude, this Talk life experience and learning your own. Just be, just be one of four people who gets accepted into these programs and do it three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just be the elite person who never stopped going to that's, school. That's turtleneck and living status. life. You want to go in to this you want to go into it already turtleneck yeah yo those are turtleneck people wearing people that i want to punch those in the people face. are turtlenecks they are <laughs> they they are turtlenecks. they wear people as turtlenecks yeah, yeah. oh my gosh okay amazing For number three yeah yes. number three this this just goes to show how how easy playwriting truly is all you got to do is you take a play rewrite it and just add something crazy to make it your own like streetcar named desire cool Add a clown, set it in space. You're doing great. New original. <laughs> and what would you call? What would you name that? What would you call it? Krusty! Krusty! <laughs> uh, streetcar named Laffy in space is what I'd call it. <laughs> a spa spaceship named Laffy. A space car. A space car named. A space car named Krusty. Yeah. Sp oh. Space car named Tickles. Oh. Tickles. <laughs> oh, that's an that's a that's an original. No one's ever done that before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How about I'm this? ready for it. Okay. Uh, better yet, do what everyone else is doing these days, and just do an adaptation where you take a classical piece, but making fucking buck wild for literally no reason. Take the importance of being earnest, but make it the importance of being earnest goes to camp. See, it's the important of being earnest, but adapted the earnest character from those movies. It's theatrical. It's 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 a you can copy my homework, but no, do a different version. Don't get in trouble. I've, 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 I've been in the importance of being earnest, so this is like I played earnest in it in high school. So like, or no, no, in college, and oh my god, yeah, the importance of being earnest at camp. The importance of being earnest in space. The importance of being earnest. <laughs> On a first date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Have you ever it. see the Ernest movies? Like Ernest goes to camp and all those stupid things. 
I don't know if I did. You got to watch them. They're so dumb. It's like, it's a combo. That's the adaptation we're going for. I'm going for all the uh, 1989 born babies. They'll get it. Oh my God. I love it. Okay. Number, number two, you got to only use words with around five syllables or ones that no one knows. Like nothing says I write in a medium that most people don't bother with anymore than using words people don't even can't even read let alone pronounce <laughs> okay. i got okay. i got some examples okay oh yes in do- fragilistic ex- 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 yeah. <laughs> no that one's a fucking delight and everyone says that one all the time <laughs> <laughs> we got indubitably 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 yeah that's too many <laughs> syllables elucidate <laughs> we got elucidate what elucidate uh-huh exactly obfuscate Perfunctory. Perfunctory. Oh what does that mean? Refunctory. Refunctory. No. A refunctory. Sycophant. And the most complicated that no one uses is uh, Kozanowski. So- <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> Woo! Oh, wow. Where's my face? Because I think I just got dragged. Yeah, you got to stick oh. You got to stick words like blowjob. Yeah, man. yo, yeah, be it, simple. Is, it is one of my most um, biggest pet peeves when people try to say things in weird words like, oh, well, uh, let's edify this or, um, oh, oh, perchance or um, per the this or that. And it's like, will you just shut the fuck yeah, up and shut speak up, English? Dude. Harry Potter. Potter. Nobody speaks that like that unless you are a turtleneck. Harry Potter indubitably pulled his cock out and got on the horse. Of the, the perfunctory in, the horse. The equestrian. <laughs> of the perfunctory horse. Of the perfunctory. <laughs> oh my god. So you got you got uh, that that top top the, one silly top tip. tip? I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm ready. So number one, to be a successful playwright, the most important tip is to learn how to write for TV because that's what you're going to end up doing. Ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. so many. There's so much TV. And you say, yeah. well, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, yeah. Fuck the theater. Yeah. But you're like, TV wait is a the second, next Matt. Great show. Could we make it a TV show? <laughs> yeah. It's true. Like, that's great. How can we? Oh, you write for theater? Cool. Let's get you on a TV show because, yeah. uh, I want Harry Potter's dick on my TV screen. Now! Now. It's kind of like asking a chef if he can farm. It's like, that's not the same, but sure, I guess I'll learn a completely different fucking medium because yeah. Jesus. And can you Man. farm the food? No. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Well, those were fucking those, beautiful. Those were beautiful. Oh, thank you, guys, guys, right there. guys, look at you staying around. You guys got 10 you got the top bonus tips. tips. You got bonus tips. And what? A, how, how much does that go to show that Matt uh, has listened to all these first top five tips? Yeah, he, that he was He knows beautiful. what he's freaking doing. And, guys. He, you know, he, he did... He he messed up uh, the top two tip, which don't be an asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He did call out my do my, as my... I do as I you know as I say, not as I do is a uh, uh, the eleventh tip, and uh, you know, fuck you guys. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the eleventh tip yeah, is fuck yeah, you yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Fuck I you love guys. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, the number one is do whatever the fuck you want. Whatever so the fuck you good. want. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, well hey, I, I look, I'm ready to, I'm ready to hit Broadway, baby. Uh, me too. And you know what? You know what's so exciting about this episode? We are going to be on Broadway. We're, well, well, we're going to be on a stage. The Men of Doozy <laughs> are coming to a theater in New York very soon. And guess what? We didn't even plan this. He was a guest, and then we got cast in his play called Toxic Norse Kalinity. That's right. About toxic masculinity with Vikings and a a random. It makes sense that I'm the lead, and, 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 and it makes sense that I'm a grungy, weird. <laughs> it um, really makes sense that I'm the lead here. And, yeah, and, that's and hilarious. It, and it makes sense that I'm uh, that we're friends in it, and that I talk about love and being, um, uh, uh, uh you know, like accepting you kind of who you are. Steer me in the right direction. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Which I Which do you here. Kind of really, yeah. <laughs> Factually accurate. Like, Kirk, can I say this? You're like. It's like, you know, hey, hey, cool it on the blowjob jokes, no, dude. I'm okay. But guys, guys, Toxic Norse Kalinity. It is coming to the Chain Theater Festival later this month in early August. You can check both the Menadoozy, me, and Alex in that play. 
which is written by Matthew McLachlan himself That's right. on July 25th, July 27th, August 1st, August 7th, and 8th. You guys are not going to want to miss it. It oh, is yeah. hilarious. But until then, guys, thank you for watching the Mana Doozy podcast. Oh Please comment God. what your favorite tip was. And listen, I, I guess if you have a tip for us on how to, um, uh, you know what, it doesn't even matter. If you think you have a tip for us, you're obviously Put a, 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 um, a turtleneck. I can't, you think, I can't even see If you see think you can tell us how to write a play. Saw, I can't even look at you. Yeah, exactly. I can't if you think see. you get a tip for us, you, you get a deep V. You're wearing a you're, deep V. You're, you're, your neck's not even connected, That's bro. That's right. You don't have a neck. Well, <laughs> hey, hey sh- share this with your friends. Yes, guys. <laughs> um, guys, we are on uh, YouTube. Please We're like, on YouTube. like that. Like, comment, share. You like video subscribe. games? We play Twitch. Yes, yes. Please listen to us on all the podcast platforms. And Definitely. see us in the theater. See us in the theater. Tickets and and dates are in the um uh, the description That's below. Right. And please, guys, bring if, some Botticelli's with you. Go yeah. on your burn board, Eat okay? Pasta. Doozy fifteen. Go to Botticelli's, the Doozy. And um, uh, yeah. guys, if there's something you that that you want to learn about and have us teach you while we also learn about it let us know yeah makes sense to me or even if you want to be a guest and you think you're special enough let us know i promise you during this play we will not pull our cocks out i promise you (laughs) there will be a goose there will be a goose before we before we leave matt is there any any uh can you um uh, shout out maybe uh things that are coming up for you obviously we got the toxic north scalinity anything you'd like to shout out your um instagram anything's coming up for you Certain yeah things. I've, I've got uh a lot of my plays and theater life happening uh post a lot about that on my instagram which is 19 marty mcfly 85 please check that out i have my podcast with my lovely lady love uh called comic books in which uh i teach her all about the comic book world, one character at a time. And uh, we make just as many dick and goose jokes as we do here. And at the end of each episode, she teaches me about something that she also loves and cares about. Uh, it's really fun, really funny. Uh, I think that's about it. That's about I, it, and I, I, I will. I will also say, if you want to read um, uh, Matt's work and you find yourself in um, the city... You can visit the Drama Bookshop. His um, what's what's the name of your your collection of? Yeah, I've got t- I've got two th- two things in stock at the drama the brand new Drama Bookshop, uh, opened by Lin Manuel Miranda, and it is mm-hmm. the play Orion and a collection of one acts called uh, a collection of one acts and other things you may or may not enjoy. Yes. Hey, this has been great. This has been a great episode. This has been great. I am so excited to uh, freaking get on stage and to collaborate with you and Mm -hmm. to get writing. Get to writing. Yeah, guys. And I think think we just close it off uh, with, with, uh, I'll say the top two tip. Uh, and then you say your top one tip, okay? We'll we'll end the show. This is the the finale of the show. Okay. okay? And the lights come up. Don't be an asshole. What? Okay. It doesn't really matter what you're writing if people don't even want to work with you. Oh, yeah? Well, you can do whatever the hell you want, okay? Don't think you have to look at me or be or write in any sort of way. Your experience and who you are is what makes your voice unique. Oh, yeah? Well, don't be an asshole. Because it doesn't really matter what you're writing if people don't even want to work with you. Listen, do whatever you want, the hell you want, but at least come to Toxic North Scalinity at the Chain Theater Festival later this month. Love you guys. See you. Have a great day.